Hey there, welcome to another episode of Savor Food and Body. Today I wanted to talk about sugar and the anti-sugar movement, uh, the diet culture influence of why we should be cutting out sugar. And also uh, a little bit of seasonality talk around food too. We have Halloween coming up on Saturday and historically it's not uncommon for folks that have a strong resistance to sugar and sometimes even carbohydrates in general to have Halloween come around where there's an abundance all of a sudden of sugar and candy in the house, especially if you have um, kids or folks that like to go trick-or-treating, and all of a sudden people feel out of control with sweet. And they indulge in the sweet uh, for Halloween and they think, well, surely I'm going to get it back under control again. And that doesn't happen that way. And it's not uncommon for folks to literally snowball into New Year's feeling like they've completely lost control with eating carbohydrates and sweet foods and have had many instances of overeating, feeling sickly full, or even binge eating. So I want to break this down a little bit in where this very lived experience can come from for so many people. And a handful of years ago, there was this idea circling around called the food addiction theory. And researchers were looking into you know, why is that? Why are certain foods that are highly palatable, especially carbohydrates and refined sugar, why do they light up certain areas of our brain that also light up when we have uh, uh, illicit drugs? So I think it was cocaine or heroin were the, the two drugs that were tested. And what's happening in the brain is that both the drugs and the food can light up these uh, pleasure uh, signals in our brain related to dopamine, dopamine and showing that the brain is getting pleasure from having that drug or food. Um, there were also some testing done primarily on mice and not as many tests test done with humans. And if you want to learn more about those studies in particular, I did write a blog post on this and it is going to land on alpinenutrition.org website next week and you can read more about those studies. There will be links to those studies. So um, back to what the researchers found and really these are the, the researchers that aim to kind of refute this food addiction theory. When they went in and looked at some of the limiting factors of the studies done on food addiction in general and even connecting them to the obesity epidemic, what they found is the, those original studies didn't account for restriction. So we also know from research relating to restriction and semi-starvation and or complete starvation with folks, anytime any kind of food is withheld or restricted for any reason at all, including dieting or famines, the refeeding response or the eating response once someone has has access to food in general, or in this case sh sugar, carbohydrates, the, those pleasure signals go off in a really extreme way and it increases that mindset of like, oh my gosh, I gotta have it now. The eating out of control mindset, the ramped up cravings. But the key piece to that is the restriction. So we know from increasing research, restriction is what relates to the binging, the feeling out of control with food. And in many cases, it's the restriction that causes that feeling out of control eating behavior, and it's not the food itself. So where does this, how does this land with especially the season that we're about to come into? So starting on Saturday, we have Halloween. Uh, I imagine Halloween might be a little bit different this year, thanks to COVID. But in any case, it is kind of the kickoff of the season of having uh, sugary foods around. Uh, if you are going into an office, you might be seeing more holiday treats showing up. And so I really want folks to understand 
what this relationship is between restriction and binging or feeling like you've over overeaten too much on the sweet treats and feeling sickly full. And you don't have to feel that way by any means. But where the work comes in, the work to be done, comes in with restriction, not limiting yourself from those sweet foods. So as I was talking about uh, in a post earlier this week about how um, baking this time of year, weather's getting colder, it feels warm and cozy to hop in the kitchen, and bake your favorite cookies or muffins or even breads. And I'm seeing that common theme with many of my clients right now, as well as myself. Uh, it's way more fun to turn on an oven and bake something delicious as the colors in the trees are changing and the temperatures are cooler than it does in the middle of, say, July or August when it's hot. Nobody wants to turn on an oven then. And so this is how I kind of think of uh, seasonal eating and seasonal eating tied into intuitive eating. And what that means is our body's uh, needs change and our interests in different foods change. Uh, if we want to call it cravings, you could call it that, um, but it's not a completely accurate word. Um, information for another post. But as, our, as the seasons change, different foods become available. For example, now there's more winter squash available. Um, there's a bounty of harvest, um, fall harvest, like with apples, pears, things like that that are becoming seasonally available. Same way as during the summertime, there's plenty of um, peaches and berries and lots of delicious fruit, uh, lots of different um, salad greens, things like that. So, and it's not all just produce, it's, this relates to other foods too. So it's not uncommon when it's warm outside, maybe we gravitate for more salads and fresh fruits and vegetables and maybe even ice cream, something that's cooling. On the flip side of that, then when it turns into the cooler months, we want things that are warm and hearty and cozy uh, and savory and sweet. And part of this relates to just what our bodies are, how they're hardwired. Our ancestors were driven to eat more calorically rich, um, highly pleasurable foods during these fall months going into winter because it wanted to help us survive for the winter. So if we're encouraged to eat more of these highly palatable foods during this month, we're more likely to survive winter. So that was way back in the day, of course, and things are a little bit different now, and we don't have to worry about um, packing on additional uh, layers of insulation around us thanks to central heating and warm coats and uh, blankets and things like that. But if you pay attention, and this is where the intuitive eating comes in, if you take that mindful minute and notice if some of your food preferences are changing as the seasons are changing, that's completely normal. And there's no, uh, there's no secret behind why do we have these highly palatable foods, um, sweeter foods, coinciding with holidays kind of happening around when our weather is changing too. Um, I should also preference this is more related to northern hemisphere. So obviously if you're in the southern hemisphere right now, you're going into the seasonal change of warmer months. So again, that might be a little bit different based on your location. So as we go into this holiday weekend and with Halloween, and if you um, want to participate in having some trick-or-treating going on or um, small gatherings with friends, whatever that looks like for you, I want to encourage you to really kind of test your brain a little bit in its comfort level around having sweet foods. And my hope, my strong hope for you this year is that starting with Halloween, you can really start pushing that envelope around having full permission with, um, with sweets, with sugar, with baked foods. And maybe this year, by the time uh, New Year's rolls around, you will have this really rock solid, peaceful relationship with sugar, knowing that the minute you restrict it again, the minute you're also going to feel out of control with sugar. So 
Uh, let's do different, not harder, this time in this holiday season. And starting on Saturday, let's kick off uh, developing a peaceful relationship with sugar. And as always, checking in with your body and how does, uh, how does this whole process of learning to make peace with sugar feel in your body and being open to the fact that it's probably gonna feel a little scary, a little out of control at first, but it's not always gonna be that way and you are gonna land exactly where your body needs to in a peaceful relationship with baked goods and sweets. So again, if you wanna learn more about that, including some of the links to the studies um, that I referenced today, check out the blog on alpinenutrition.org. That is going to uh, land there next Tuesday, so right after Halloween. And if you wanna learn more about tips on how to maintain intuitive eating skills during the holidays, Starting next week here on Savor Food and Body, I'm going to be unpacking each one of the principles of intuitive eating and how they might relate to your life living through the holidays. And as always, if you want to stay in touch, definitely head over to alpinenutrition.org. There is a fantastic guide there called the Savor Food and Body Guide, Five Ways to Reclaim Your Health from Diet Culture, and I highly recommend that you download that. It's free and it's a great resource um, to get you in towards this holiday season that's coming up. And then you'll also be enrolled as an Alpine Insider, getting weekly emails with additional tips, resources, support, and recipes. So again, head over to alpinenutrition.org and you can download the Saber Food and Body Guide as well as become an Alpine Insider. So with that, I wish you a very uh, sweet holiday weekend and a Halloween weekend. I hope you have way more fun and sweets rather than tricks. And I will see you next week. Take care.